Today we come to Binghamton to show you what happens when our electoral system, the cornerstone of our democracy, is run by big money and not the regular hardworking people such as yourselves. New York is well known for its sad, dysfunctional legislature. In fact, in 1976 to 2010, New York had more corruption convictions of public officials than any other state in the Union. And before I go on to begin this whole bizarre situation with these folks, I would like to introduce you a very honest and loyal member of our political parties, Mr. Matt Ryan, the mayor of Binghamton. Is it working now? <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to this great caravan of corruption. I hope I'm never part of it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was thinking a lot about this today, and I first of all, I'd like to thank Larry, Larry Parham and all the people who have uh, worked so hard to spread the news about what this corruption means for our system. And uh, let's have a big hand for all the people who are working on this. I always wonder how each one of these started out, each one of these uh, caravan members. Did they start out uh, as people who were... I don't think this is really working. It's cutting out again. Did they, did they start out as people who were uh, really uh, believed in what they were doing? Or did they find out early on uh, from other people that really, from the beginning of their careers, uh, they, sh they knew, they would know that unless you go for the big money, you're going nowhere. Uh, a lot of times that's true. And so it seems to me that, you know, those politicians who might claim, and when I was watching the Pri Priceless DVD, those politicians who might claim that they never vote uh, because of the money they're getting might just be telling the truth. Because they know getting going in that they're going to take this money. They know that their beliefs have to be tailored towards the people they're taking the money from. And so uh, the most cynical view, I think, would say, uh, and I think it's unfortunately got to that point, that uh, most of the politicians going into the major uh, you know, state and federal government positions already know where they have to go to get the money to run. And so they tailor their positions right from the start. And then they can say, oh, I believed in this anyway. Uh, so that's, I think that's the point where it's gotten to. And we see, if you watch, listen, and read about this, that it, it's affecting so much in our society. Uh, the two examples that were given in the Priceless uh, DVD are um, oil, being able to transition from oil to something else, and our food industry. And pretty much all the money to, uh, they, they show how much money has gone to all the uh, senators and congressmen uh, from the oil and gas industry. And you know what they're going to do. They're going to kill subsidies to, uh, to, uh, um, to the uh, renewable green energy movement. And in fact, the ratio for subsidies is 70 to 12 or something like that. 70 for oil and gas to 12 billion for renewables. So you see that it goes in place. It's amazing what they'll kill, um, little bills that they'll kill just to keep any kind of progressive movement going away. And the studies show that the yields from organic farming can be just as great if done properly as chemical farming. And these chemicals don't just affect how big our, uh, you know, our, our, it's just so much money in chemicals. And uh, we didn't always farm like that. Uh, we used to have family farms, and they were much healthier. And we see the, the problems it's causing for, for um, so many people uh, and, our, and our food supply and, and really transitioning much of our land into an, an arid, uh, maybe eventually desert-type situation by monoculture. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to think that our local uh, elections are a little cleaner, but we've seen in this race uh, oil and gas money going to the coffers of uh, the county executive race, uh, certainly always in Senator Libus's coffers. And uh, 
I would like to, I heard there's a nomination process. If their name is not up here, you can nominate people, and I would like to be the first to nominate Senator Libas for this paper. Yeah. You know, um, when Senator Libas, uh, our friend Nick Slippery, Nick's panel here, he called uh, Tom Libas and in the trial, in that federal corruption trial that uh, brought out Senator Libas's name that I, I uh, ended up filing a, a claim to the Ethics Commission about Senator Libas. In that same testimony, Nick, uh, it came out that Nick Spano called Tom Libas my go-to guy. That's what he called him. And so I would think that he deserves uh, credibility as a nominee tonight. Uh, the other thing, just so you know about that uh, inquiry, I was a, a lawyer, trial lawyer, for a long time, and when I saw what was said during that, and how it came out, just so I can explain it quick and then I'll get out of here, uh, there was a federal corruption trial, trial down in Yonkers about a city uh, a Yonkers councilwoman and a friend of hers that were influencing uh, big housing projects and, stuff and money down in, in that area. And this guy, um, what's his name now? But anyway, he, he could have been a defendant in the case. Instead, he turned uh, state state witness, uh, a federal witness, for the for the prosecution, and he was facing 45 years uh, in state in federal prison. And the only way, if anybody knows anything about the federal uh, prison system, federal uh, system of uh, prosecution, the only way you get your sentence reduced is if you tell everything you know because usually the people involved in this know other people that are involved in this. And so he told his story to the federal prosecutors and they put him on the stand. And, and when the, actually the defense lawyers brought this out because they wanted to make uh, these guys, Mr. Mangone, look so bad that maybe the jury wouldn't believe anything he said. Bring out everything he's ever done. When I talked to the defense attorney before I filed this claim, I said, you know, why did you bring it up? And he said, well, we wanted to make Mangone look as bad as possible and maybe the jury wouldn't uh, believe a word he said. I said, but at the end of the day, did you believe him? What he testified to about Libus, about the fact that he uh, called up and said, I want my job to get, a, my son to get a job for $50,000. I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. He's a lawyer, $50,000, that's a fair salary. But within a couple weeks, he called up, I want it raised to $100,000. And uh, they said, well, okay. Then, he was only worked there for eight months, then within that eight months, he called back and said, I think you should up it to 150, give him a car, an expense account, and all this. And uh, they said, they balked at that. They said, we just can't afford that. He says, well, don't worry about it. I will get this uh, Haifa, who's a big PR firm, that, uh, you know, all these uh, local BU, uh, the hospitals, a lot of organizations have paid a lot of money to Haifa, all Tom Livis' friends to use Haifa to lobby in Albany. And so there we have it. And then after this, Haifa admitted that for one year, they, he said Haifa will pay the other $50,000, don't worry about it. After this all went through and the ethics complaint went in, Haifa made a statement, their publicity person made a statement saying, we did indeed pay uh, this law firm that Mangone worked for and Tom Lewis's son worked for, we paid them $50,000 this one year. Uh, we're not, you know, for, for work that he did for us. Uh, that's what they're claiming. But Mr. Mangos tells a very different story. And, and they, and his lawyer, and, and the lawyer from the other side said, Mr. Mangone would never lie about something like this because if he lied, and it came out that he lied, and he ruined the prosecution, he wouldn't be only facing 46 years, he'd be facing another perjury charge. So that's why I filed the um, thing against Senator Lewis. That's why I'm proud to nominate him today. And that's why I'm proud of all the work you guys are doing, because there is so much corrupt money in politics right now. Our politicians are bought and sold at many different levels, and we can't have it continue if we're going to have the kind of democracy we deserve. Thank you.